from my dreaming so welcome back to my channel and thanks so much for dropping by now for this soap i'm doing another soap challenge soap now as you may have heard before i'm not actually competing in the soap challenge i'm just a member of the bubble support crew and what we do is we take the tutorials that are taught and then we have sort of like an early attempt at the technique so therefore we can give helpful, hopefully helpful, hints and tips to people who are actually entering the competition. So this was a soap that I made as an example soap of the technique. Now the technique was porcelain designs and it was the technique for the March 2022 soap challenge. And the guest tutor was Linda Irwan or Irwan, sorry I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce your second name, from Moya Soaps and I'm going to put a link to um, any social media and things that I can find for Linda in my description below so you can go and check out some of the great things that she does. So the idea of this technique was to take your soap, obviously, and to create a porcelain design on it. Now, there were some strict criteria for the challenge in that the design that you created on your soap actually had to be inspired by some sort of porcelain or pottery. But let's face it, if you want to go at this technique yourself, you could actually do any design that you wanted to. Now, this is another one of those techniques where the design is on the surface of the soap. And it does take quite a bit of time to actually do it, but it is a fun technique to do. Now, as I make this soap, I am going to go back to doing a voiceover as I'm actually making it. And this was just because there was an awful lot of noise outside because our neighbours were having some building work done. So, back to a voiceover. Hopefully, you won't mind that. So, come on, let's go make some soap. So for this technique, we want to have a pretty shallow mould because what we need to do is we need to decorate the top and get good access to it. So all I've done with mine is, my mould's pretty shallow anyway and I could have probably got away with this, but can you see, I've just lined it, I've just put in three layers of foam board. It's just what I had. You could use cardboard, you can use a box or anything. And then I've just laid a little bit of freezer paper on there just to make sure my soap doesn't stick to that foam board. And then that's going to take my design pretty well to the top of this mould. I'm only doing a, a small mould because the design I've got planned is quite detailed and therefore I don't want to have too long with, you know, spending too long with the painting and that and everything setting up. I'm going to create a base layer on my soap first of all and let that set up a little bit so I've got my oils and lye and I'm going to fragrance the base and I'm using Dippy Doosan fragrance. Now this is a dupe and it's from Oasis Oils here in the UK and it's a sort of floral musky type fragrance, it's got notes of tuberose and things like that, it's a really nice fragrance. It's not an overly floral fragrance, but it does have some floral hints to it. And then for my base, I'm going to have some bluebells in my design, I hope, in the top. So I'm going to do a very light coloured base with just a combination of these two in. So the blue and a slight hint of the purple, but it's going to be a very gently coloured base. So let's get this base mixed up. Now it's just started to get really noisy outside, so I'm going to do a voiceover for the rest of this video. So all I'm doing first of all is just simply mixing up my first layer. Now with this technique, you can do it all in one layer and just literally do your design straight on top of a just normal poured soap. Or you can do a couple of layers and that's what I'm doing here is I'm doing a thicker layer first of all and just getting that in the mold and then I'm doing a thinner layer on the top 
and then using that as just a nice white base so that my design stands out more so it just adds a little bit more interest to the soap but just one complete layer would be absolutely fine so all I've just done is made a very light colored soap as you can see here I've tried to make it sort of a gentle light blue blue belly violety type color is what I'm aiming for I'm just going to pop it into this mold and then just get it as flat as possible and just let that set up before I do my top layer. Now for this technique you need to have lots and lots of tiny weeny little amounts of colour to pipe onto the top of your soap which therefore requires lots of tiny weeny little piping bags. I'm not a big lover of single use plastics so I'm never going to get a whole load of disposable piping bags and use them for a technique like this. What I've actually got here is, you know sometimes when you have parcels delivered and you get those sort of air pillow things. That's all I've got here, some old packaging that's arrived and the sort of square bag type things. So as you can see, I'm just cutting these up and I'm going to use those to make my little tiny piping bags out of. As I said, you can use piping bags. I do have piping bags that I wash up every time, but they're quite big and I just wanted some little tiny weeny ones. If you don't have piping bags, you can always just use little sandwich bags and things like that. Um, but obviously, try and use something that, you know, maybe is a little bit recycled. And then moving on to our colours. Now this way you've got to be a little bit careful. I've got in the jug there the bit that I want for my sort of base of my soap that's going on top of the bit that I've already poured and then I want lots of tiny weeny little bits of piping and really is tiny amounts it's no more than sort of a spoonful sort of of each. I'm not going to go through every single colour that I've got on the screen here but how I've decided on these colours is I'm <laughs> really quite rubbish at drawing. Luckily I can make soap better than I can draw. So what I did is I actually spent a little bit of time practicing my designs. I drew my design out and I'm doing some fairies of the design and I started off being truly atrocious at drawing them. But I drew them several times and then I got to the point where I could draw them without looking at what I was trying to copy them from. And then I got to the point where I could draw them in or I made myself get to a point where I could draw them in a pen without doing any corrections and at that point all right they're not the best drawings in the world but they were okay so by that time you sort of get a muscle memory and you get used to how you draw things and certainly my final drawings of fairies were so much better than my first quite humorous attempts so when I did that I also then got a good chance to think about the types of colors that I wanted to use and I made myself a list of those colours and as you can see here I've made up teeny weeny little bits of each of those colours that I want. And then with each of those colours we need to get them into our individual teeny weeny little piping bags. Now one thing to bear in mind whilst we're doing this is Remember, you need all of this lot to stay really fluid. The soap you're going to pour to be your new base and also these individual little bits of piping need to stay lovely and fluid. So therefore, if you've got a fragrance oil that accelerates in any way, that's another good reason for doing that other base layer to get your fragrance in that and then maybe do this top layer unfragranced so you can keep that fluid nature of your batter. Because if it starts getting all thick, you're not going to be able to pipe it. Okay, let's have a go at this design. Now what I'm doing here at the moment, can you see at the top of the screen, just about, I'm just testing the thickness of my batter. What I found with this technique is that you didn't want it too super runny because then you got sort of weird little drips 
that came out of your icing bag. But you obviously didn't want it too thick either. So it was, a, it was quite a balance of trying to get the thickness of the batter right. Also, this white layer, you want this to be pretty fluid as well. Because the idea is, is you end up wanting your design to sort of sit level with the top. It's not supposed to be a technique where you have a solid bar of soap and then put a design on top of it. It's almost supposed to sort of sit into the soap and sort of form one with the soap rather than sitting proud. So I'm just going to add a couple of other things that I found sort of useful or whatever, hopefully, and then we'll just have a look through me doing some of this design work. So one of the things I found also that was useful was to be prepared to do bits and pieces of your design sort of out of order. So for me, I picked up the colours that were ready to use. So some of my colours were actually got ready a lot quicker than others. So I ended up, for example, here doing all the wings in this grey of my fairy first and then coming back and having a look at the other bits of piping and seeing which colours were ready. And from that, I then piped those bits. And that was another reason for making sure you were happy with your design, perhaps on paper, before you then try and put it onto the soap. Day. So after I finished painting it, I was very careful. I did cover it with some cling wrap, but my soap was really, really close to the top of the mould, so I was really careful to make sure I didn't let that cling wrap touch the soap. I kept it nice and securely covered, and this is actually two days later, with a slab, even a small slab like this, when I'm going to cut it so that the face is the important bit. I always keep mine sealed for two days to prevent any soda ash and I've got a nice shiny surface. So let's get this cut up. So I've just got the four bars to chop so let's just get this sliced into those four bars.
I'm pleased with the blue colour in the bottom. I think that just sets off the design nicely on the top. So to finish these off, I'm just going to, I'm not going to do it on screen, I'm just going to bevel the edges with just a vegetable peeler, I think, for these. And then we'll come back and have a look at some final photos of them. And here is that final photo of the soap. To be honest, we probably don't need it, do we? Because we've seen them and it looks pretty well exactly the same as the previous shot. But never mind. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video, folks, and that you like the soap. If you have, it'd be great if you gave me a thumbs up. And why not consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't done so already? Thanks so much for watching, everyone. Happy soaping!